Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me once again. Now then, today we're going to have another review, but this is going to be another one of those reviews where we talk about a kit. Um, I'm very lucky today because I've actually got the kit before and after construction because uh, a relative of mine has the same kit that I built a year ago. It's the Messerschmitt BF109 G6 in 148 scale from Tamiya. Now, the, one of the reasons I wanted to make this video in the way I'm going to make it was simply because um, I think a lot of things uh, when you talk about kits and you do reviews on kits and give your opinions um, it's amazing how many people's opinions are the same. Sometimes people violently disagree with you um, and sometimes they're right <laughs> because in some cases they've made the kit and say Peter that's an awful kit or Peter that's a fantastic kit it's okay. Now this happened recently with <clears throat> the Tamiya 148 scale Spitfire Mark I from the Battle of Britain and I just happen to have it here in the Phantom Flyer form which some of you may have seen. So I'm going to move that to one side. I'll zoom you in, let's zoom you in. Let you have a little look at this. I think I will have to move that because otherwise we all know what happens. It focuses on the, bo the box behind doesn't it? So let's move that out of the way. Now we've got the um, We've got the finished kit over there as well. We'll talk about that later. But this is the Spitfire. Um, it's a very nice kit indeed, as you would expect from Tamiya 48 scale. It's one of their latest uh, 48 scale kits, if not the latest, I think. And it came out about 2019, um, a year later than the Messerschmitt we're just going to talk about later. Now, so I know what you're thinking. What's it all about? What's all this about? What's the problem? Well. I, I enjoyed making this kit, don't get me wrong, and it's, it looks absolutely splendid, I think. Good enough anyway, you know. Um, it's the Phantom Flyer. Um, in other words, it's not got any squadron markings, because it's this um, sort of a tribute I did to the Warlord cartoon from 1975, uh, the comic cartoon. And, yeah, I, I quite enjoyed building this, and I thought that it was nice to sort of commemorate this unusual sort of story where the Phantom Flyer is a guy who is ruled out as unfit in the RAF and they won't let him take part in the Battle of Britain uh, because he's had an accident and he says that he's perfectly fit to fly and they're being a bit over the top about it. So what does he do? He hangs around, he sets up a farm near an airbase and sure enough sooner or later a Spitfire gets, uh, gets to crash land and its pilot is unconscious and he basically spirits the aircraft away and uh, starts his own Battle of Britain to support the local squadron but without their knowledge or consent and uh, and it's quite an interesting story and quite amusing as well um, and I think it's uh, I think this is quite a nice little tribute anyway but the point of the story is this the Tamiya kit as I mentioned is their latest um, and previously 2018 they released the BF109 G6 we're going to talk about in detail in a moment and I didn't feel that the new kit was as good as the one prior to it. I thought that the Spitfire was a bit a bit dull, really. In that, as we'll see in detail, there's lots of features in that, that BF109. And of course, when they announced it, everybody said, Oh my, no, what, another BF109E? The world doesn't need it. We've got, we've got them everywhere. We've got loads from Edward, Airfix do them. Tamiya uh, had one, I think, previously, uh, and there's so many manufacturers, Hasegawa and Revell, and, you know, there's just too many of them. Crazy. So, in fairness to Tamiya, they really pushed the boats out. And I say, we'll go into this in detail, you'll understand why. Now, with this, they sort of went backwards. Um, it's a beautifully moulded kit, it's very accurate in terms of its shape, I think. It looks just right, you know. Except, they had this horrible seam they insisted on putting this separate piece for the the tip of the the cowling just before the spin here which creates problems now i've talked about this in the review i did so i won't go into too much detail it wasn't necessary and it, it was just giving a problem that, that didn't need to be given and in every other respect you know the, the fit of the kit was so good and yet this wasn't some people say they didn't have a, too much of a problem with it and some people couldn't understand why I was being perhaps a little bit negative <coughs> about what is otherwise a really nice kit. And it looks a great spit. I love this actually. I can play with it. But 
Um, what disappointed me was that you got to... Everything has a context in life, you know. If the Queen of England was... Um, I remember there's a story um, by Sue Townsend who did the Adrian Mole children's stories about a young boy. And she also wrote a story, and I can't remember the, the title of it, but basically it was about the Queen of England. There's a general election and some sort of uh, very communist government comes into Britain and takes over. And the Queen and the royal family... Uh, I sort of got rid of as a monarchy, they're not, nothing nasty, but they're just uh, absor dissolved as a monarchy and they have to live a normal life and the Queen has to go and live in a council house. <laughs> now, this is, a, this is a contextual thing and this is where I'm coming to you on this subject. If the Queen was to live in a council house, she would think, you know, that that is, that is really very unpleasant and rough and not, you know, not what she's used to and really a very retrograde step. If um, you know, a, a refugee who's fleeing from Syria, say, or some other war-torn country, you know, like somewhere in Africa, if they were offered a council house, they would think that that was an absolutely magnificent thing. They would think that they had really achieved something and a big step up for them. So this is the point, it's about context, it depends what you are used to. Now I built the ME109 BF109 G6 first, and it's, it is the better kit, I can guarantee it's the better kit. Um, if I built this first, I would have been very, very much more enthusiastic about it. Um, but the fact remains that Tamiya released the better kit 18 months, 2 years before before the one that was not so good. So this is the context I'm talking about, and this is why uh, I understand people were feeling a little bit, perhaps I was a bit overcritical, but they didn't understand the context, that's all. Um, they, I don't think they were wrong, and I certainly wasn't wrong. But if you understand the context of where I was coming from, if you've built this kit first, which we'll go into in a minute in detail, you'll understand and you'll see why it's better than this. And this kit, uh, the Spitfire, which is still a very nice Spitfire, one of the best on the market, if not the best, despite the issues I mentioned, um, including its decals, but then they all suffer from that. <laughs> um, it's only about £3 cheaper, and I think there is a big, much bigger uh, delta in quality than £3 between these two kits. So, without further ado, I'll put the Spitfire, stop playing my Spitfire, put my Spitfire down over there where it's safe. And we will get this uh, 109 out and have a proper look at it and you can perhaps understand where I'm coming from. Now, we have the finished product here so I can actually have a little bit with this, can't I? Now here we have it, I'll bring you in. <coughs> and you're going to see straight away it's got some things over the Spitfire which are instantly visible. In that it has got um, opening uh, engine cowls. A detailed engine. Whoops! I've dropped my men. Sorry, I've got some. Um, I have got here some ground crew from ICM, and they're really good. I've got to say, I recommend them to you. The 148 Luftwaffe ground crew. And uh, there's one there, and there's one actually who's propped himself up. You can see. He says, "Get you in focus." There we are. He's inspecting the engine at the moment as well. So that's not included in the kit. That's from ICM. However, straight away, you know, you look at this, I have, I did add, add um, a little tiny photo etch kit, I think it was an Edward one, uh, I think it was an Edward zoom upgrade and it included some, this wiring uh, for the engine, but that was the only thing I added, everything else came in the kit and you have got all sorts of clever trickery in this one, you've got, he says, I'll try to get it in camera, you've got removable parts, we've got magnets. There's magnets here, can you see that? Now again this is only three pounds more expensive than the Spitfire and yet we have interchangeable uh, parts here which are remarkably well done I've got to say. And we've got the actual cowling, uh, the engine cover comes off and I'm not going to do it all now because it's just too time consuming but you can see now we've got how detailed the engine is and we've got this rather nifty uh, alternative, I'm not going to put it out because I'm going to knock my man off, he's going to fall off. But we've got an alternative engine cover there um, that goes on as the closed version. So there's a whole lot of stuff and we've got the closed version here of the, uh, the engine cover underneath and the intake. 
So you've got quite a lot of things there that are just not on the Spitfire. So you can see straight away, I think, you'll start to understand why I think that that is... Oops, and here we go, we're in trouble. <laughs> Let's get this back on quickly for all falls to pieces. There we go, we're all right. We're all right, we'll get our little man here back on his... Um, back on his perch. We'll put our cowling back on. So anyway, it gives you an idea of what's involved. You've got magnets on this, you've got this multimedia element to it. If you don't get in the Spitfire at all, nothing like it. Yeah? So we'll pop that on one side. Well, I won't place them in back in place just yet. We'll just have them. There we go. Let him like that. If we can. No, he's not having any of it. He's having none of it. I'll have to plonk him over there, I think. There we are. Right. Give up. <laughs> so, back to the kit. So let's do a little bit of a review on this. and um, We'll treat it as if it's a new kit, normal review. And then I'll explain as we go through what's great about it. And why I think it's so much better than the spit. So, first of all, we've got on the side a couple of options. You've got uh, JG27 based in Crete, 1943 there. There's also a group that are based in... Uh, is that... Novo Zaporozhye, I think that is in Romania, actually. Or it's the Romanian sort of uh, Czech border somewhere around there, Czech Hungary. Then we've got a nice picture showing the uh, the open engine cowling, and obviously we've got this really particularly good, I think, one of Tamiya's best artworks ever on the front, which is a really nice one. Shows another aircraft spiralling down uh, in flames, and you see the aircraft here with its drop tank on as well, which is another option. So, let's look at what we've got inside, shall we? And uh, so if I can just stop playing with the finished ones. You know. uh, but people sometimes say, oh, you do a lot of reviews. Did you ever build any? You know, the truth is I've got a lot more enthusiasm and for reviewing them and for collecting them than I have time to build them, like most people, I think, really. Anyway, let's have a look at this. It's not a, it's not a big kit. It's not got lots and lots of sprues. So it's one, two, three, four, plus the clear, so five in total. Then we have got some, in this case we've got a, an Edouard uh, mask set, which is very useful for this kit. And I use this on the one you've just seen. Then we've got some polycaps, pull call out sheet, and the instructions, plus a data sheet. So you've got a whole lot of stuff here. <clears throat> Pop that there. Right, where to begin? So, um, obviously the Edouard mask kind of goes out centre, just pop that back in the box. Um, you don't actually need the mask because they actually do provide one uh, here. But you've got to cut it out yourself, which is always a bit of a pain, I think, with Tamiya. They work beautifully, don't get me wrong, um, but it's just a bit time consuming. Having said all that, I did find with the Edouard masks for this kit, the one I've just shown you, that it wasn't the best cut on the corners. They weren't necessarily nicely cut, a little bit feathery. So you might want to consider just using the one here that's in the kit. In addition, we get a lovely set of decals, which I, this is sealed, so I'm not going to open this or any of the sealed bags that are stapled, because we kind of don't need to, especially when we've got the finished product at the side anyway, we can see what the decals are like. Um, now I have to warn you, typical true to form on Tamiya, they're very thick, these decals. And so much so that on the, on the aircraft you see in the background, I'll move it a bit more to shot, I think, the aircraft you see in the background, I actually got uh, alternative decals from Kits World, so about two thirds of them are Kits World decals. Uh, and it actually is the, uh, uh, the markings of an aircraft uh, of a guy called Franz Stiegler. You may have seen my uh, The Final Call video, which is about the story about this guy, Franz Stiegler, who was a fighter ace in the Luftwaffe, JG26, I think it was. And um, he met this um, B-17 uh, Flying Fortress over Bremen and didn't shoot it down because it was so heavily shot up. It was just 
falling to pieces, it had half the tail shot away, huge hole in the fuselage, an engine out, another one on fire and so on. It's a lovely story though, he decides not to shoot down these guys, you can see they're not going to make it, he thinks, they think the same, and he, he actually escorts them to the coast, he tries to get them to turn to Sweden and they don't, they don't want to. <laughs> Uh, they want to get back to England, um, come what may, or take the chances in the sea. Um, and he, he lets them go and he doesn't shoot them down. And he was a, a top fighter ace, he was not given to doing this. But their plight was so severe, he felt genuinely sorry for his fellow uh, man and decided not to press the fire button and actually help them get away. Uh, and years and years later, in the 1990s, they met up and became great friends, which is quite a touching story so so that, that's the markings that you see there especially when you see the Berlin Bear which was the squadron's insignia which is on this particular version I've done a bit of a mix and match here so I've got the two versions open or closed but that's the one so when we have that on it truly is Franz Stiegler's aircraft and these are his Stiegler markings on the side anyway let's have a look at what we've got so here we've got this one of these beautiful and the Tamiya are doing this so well lately aren't they it's a lovely colour call out sheet where they show you exactly what the aircraft's going to look like and when, once you've deckled it also gives you some hints about one or two of the stencils etc. Um, and they do, I think, I think I'm right in saying they do include SWAT stickers but they don't name what they are or show what they are which is quite a clever way around this problem even though I think too much is made of it. It is actually dated 2017 after 2018. It came into Europe in 2018, but I think it was released in late 2017. And it's, uh, of course, it's kit number, uh, what do they call it, 48 Travel 17? Or is it 617? Let me just give you the number. Yeah, it is double, double 17. Uh, so it's 6117. Sorry, 6 Travel 17. What do you call the call outs? Great guide, and you can cut this out, of course, if you want to, because it's to scale. So you can cut it out and use it as masks and cut them up if you want to. On the other side, you've got, again, it's a two-sided sheet. It's so beautifully printed. Here's your Malmé Cree. Uh, you've got this uh, place, we're not sure where it is. We think it's Czech Republic or Romania. Different options, some beautiful modelling uh, effects. You can have a go at that there. If you're feeling brave with your airbrush, you get some nice effects done. But a perfect you know representation very clear really gives you the information you need about what it should look like as a finished product one of the tell me i do this better than anybody i think better than anybody then we also have this info sheet whereby we get some technical data starts off all in the japanese but then the other side it's all in english so it tells you also some of the uh, sort of detail of what the components of the aircraft are all about. You can see it here. Showing your slats and your Bueller and the canopy and your cannons etc. Very useful to have. Very very helpful. Gives a lot of technical data about the aircraft, history, service record etc. Then we've got a typical Tamiyar latter day instruction book. Um, the only, the only issue I have, only complaint with these, and they're, they're very good actually, but I don't know why they've got this rather strange shape. It's not A4, it's kind of slimmer and taller, so it makes it a little bit odd. So you can't pop it in with A4 size leaflets or magazines and things, because it's a bit odd. Anyway, not a major problem. So you start off, you've got to decide with the Tamiya kits, because there's three variants. You've got to decide which variant you really want, because there, there's going to be here you can see it's a b or c and then you need to focus on that and decide if it's i'm going to build b for example um and the aircraft also b i mentioned does come with an option for ground attack so it's got uh, gondola cannons 30 millimeter cannons under the wings so it's very important you decide at the very outset which version to build Various bits you need to sort of cut out, um, and we did have an issue with that on the Spitfire where the, the clarity of the instructions was not as good as this. This is very clear, you know, you've got it there, it's pointing out straight away, drawing your attention to the fact that you need to cut that out for A or C. Now, on the Spitfire, it was vague to put it mildly, uh, and again, not a step forward, so uh, hence some of my comments there. Lots of detail to prepare, you've got to build up the inside of your 
uh, cockpits around. You've also got this sort of spigot and part of the engine assembly that the engine will sort of hang on, which is a very clever concept. The, 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 the way they design this is absolutely brilliant. In 48 scale, I don't think I've seen a better kit as a concept or execution than this. So you do up your two sides, then you bring them together. You've got the very front here as well of the engine, onto which they'll later become a magnet fitting. Then you're building up your proper cockpit and your tub for the pilot to get into. Uh, and, and I did have, uh, I mentioned I had an Edward, I think it was the Edward Zoom set. So I had a few parts, but I didn't use a lot of them because the kit parts here are so good. Don't really need them. Things like these wheels, you could build them up in photo etch. Well, to be honest, the plastic was so excellent, you don't need it. You just don't. Um, building up your mouth, you've got quite a nice pilot figure as well, which we've got this. You can see him sitting in the background, and I just uh, zoom you in. There he is, sitting in his uh, BF109. Yep, he's, uh, he's quite a nice little figure, and uh, I thought he looked okay. So we've got him to go in, and you've got to get him into his seat, obviously, on your trim wheels. You've got your cannon breech cover for the 30mm uh, cannon that fires through the spinner. All goes together into the tub, and if you don't have the pilot, you've got the option of these decal seat belts, which I never really like because they don't look right. But anyway, they're in, they are there, you know. Um, you have to bear in mind with some of these kits. Um, and I was talking to some of the team from Phil Flory's uh, company, you know, and his uh, uh, PM models team. Uh, in fact, it was Matt Ball, and he said about, you know, you can do all this detailing and then you stick it in there and you've got these things like the pedals and you've got the, uh, the toe clips, straps for the pedals. You'll never see them again, ever. You'll never see them again once it's gone in here. So just bear that in mind. You know, you might, some models prefer to do it because they know that it's there and it's authentic, which is great. But don't get hung up on this stuff because much of it never gets seen. I built the Mustang 132 scale uh, Tamiyar kit, which is a beautiful kit. And, and I reckon there's about 75 to 80 hours of work in the cockpit that is non-visible anymore. And I really regret those 80 hours were wasted. I could have done lots of things with that 80 hours. But anyway, there we go. So, we've got a bulkhead, like a rear bulkhead here that's going in. And there's lots of fine detailing and painting you need to do to get this all to go in correctly. Obviously, you've inserted from the bottom uh, the, the cockpit with the pilot and his tub through from the bottom. So you just turn it upside down. Then we're building up this beautiful Daimler Benz engine. And I have to say, it really does look nice. If you, if you spend the time to just detail this up, it looks a treat. Um, you've got so much detail going in. You've got your little compressor, your supercharger here on the side. Um, and you've got some deckling as well, which just adds to the realism. Um, this is one part where we have a... I had, in my case, the a bit of photo etch, which does add, because it's very thin, it does add a bit of realism, I thought, which is quite good. The plastic piece is fine though, again, you don't need it really, you don't need it. Then you put in your vertical stabiliser and your tail planes, and these kind of lock in with pins so you don't have any issues on this kit with things like um, the correct alignment for the tail planes. Uh, they will be absolutely true and perpendicular as long as you've cleaned up the parts. When you glue them in, you cannot make a mistake. And there's a few designs throughout the kit you'll see like this. Same here with the rudder. You can't get it misaligned because it's got these thick and thin uh, little plugs that go through there and it'll go in perfectly every time. Um, there's a few um, little bits where you need to putty various points here depending on which version you're using. Uh, there's a little bit of putting to be done to cover up certain hatches that are only on certain variants. So be aware of that. Um, you've also got a couple of holes to drill if you will, on each side if you're going to have these gondolas, the ground attack aircraft, the B, uh, which we'll talk about later. Then you're bringing in, obviously, your uh, two halves of your wing together with your wheel uh, well bays in between, which so you have to remember to paint those. And then we get the radiators go on. You pop in these, again, beautifully designed. You can't get the gaps wrong here with your ailerons. They'll go absolutely perfectly. Just 
And little details like this where yeah, the Spitfire was similar but just not quite as well executed and there wasn't quite as much detail on things like the flaps. Um, because on the Spitfire, just fl flicking back to that, there actually aren't any flaps on it. I'm going to bring it into shot here. So there's no flaps, so again less detail, less detail. Not got the same quality of uh, additional finesse that the, the Messerschmitt has. Um, <clears throat> same concept here though with the wing tips going in just like they do on the spit and then you're building up all your flaps which are uh, lower radiator flaps as well. Um, you've got the option of main flaps down or up and then you can put them in either position depending on which is your preference. Slats at the front, again they can be extended or they can be flush. I've got mine extended as you can probably see here. Yep. Then you're putting in uh, the main fuse large and the wing are coming together and they were an absolutely beautiful fit. It sort of snaps in with a click. A clip fit with no gaps, no filling was required in this model, it was absolutely perfect. Then we've got the main gear, and here we've got another very clever concept. So the main gear here has this like a, a locating uh, spigot so that you cannot get the angle wrong, similar in the Spitfire in fairness. Um, the Tamiya have come up with a way to make sure that the, the rake and the pitch are both absolutely correct and you will not be able to get it wrong. Absolutely brilliant and then you cover it over here with this cover uh, so it disappears uh, all this clever design work and you're also putting in your mounting for the drop tank which again if I zoom it in you can see here you can see it right there Okay. So <clears throat> that brings us to the drop tank, zoom down too much, yep. that brings us to the drop tank itself and then we've got these gondolas, now here's another bit of brilliant design and something again additional, so you've got something more that's on the Spitfire, not on the Spitfire. You have got here this central um, uh, centre line uh, part of the back of the cannon. Now what this does, it's got two pins and the pins mean that you will be able to align this cannon absolutely perfectly without any danger of it being pointing off either, again, in terms of its alignment in rake or pitch or whatever, you can't go wrong because it's fixed in a set position in two set holes. The sides of the gondola then are brought around that to, to cover it up and hide it. And so nobody's any the wiser, but it means that you absolutely will always get, like with the undercarriage, a perfectly positioned part fail, you know, foolproof fail safe. And then if you want to, on the B, it goes on the wing, as you can see there. Very clever stuff, this. Then you've got your building up of your uh, canopy masking. And a little bit of spraying to do. You've got to put your um, bulletproof armour behind the, uh, the pilot's seat headrest. And then you're building up your instrumentation. So it's interesting because you're doing this kind of back to front. Normally in a kit you start off with the pilot and the instruments. That's done at the beginning. Here it's quite well on in section 25. Then you're mounting this um, canopy, either open or in the closed position. Bearing in mind that there's a section here that is going to lift out. Um, and there's, uh, it says to put the front canopy in, in place temporarily because it helps you to locate everything. Then you've got your radio aerials going on here, antennas, and then you've got your spinner and propeller coming in, obviously with the 30mm cannon in the nose. And then you can see here the washer, this is where we have the washer and uh, the washer there is for the magnet to adhere to when you have this removable front nose so that you can interchange these uh, engine cowlings and it shows the concept beautifully there open or closed <coughs> then you end up at the top of the engine area where the cannons are and this again is so beautifully rendered in plastic uh, it was a joy to build this kit it was one of the most enjoyable kits I've ever built 
I'd rank it in my top three for sure. You're building up all that, you're putting your cannons on the top, then you uh, have to put the filters on, different types of filter depending on which variant you're having, uh, whether it's the Middle East, North Africa, Stroke Italy, Crete, or the standard one. And then you've got your lower underside cowling for the engine here. And then you've got your underside uh, cowling. Uh, it's basically the uh, basically the uh, fuel injection system, the Bosch fuel injection system here. Uh, the plenum chambers that's going in. The Bosch fuel injection system is actually this bit here, I think, if I'm correct. And this is your plenum chambers. Because you've got to remember this engine's kind of upside down compared to a Spitfire. They put it in, you know, with the top of the engine, the cylinder head at the bottom. <laughs> uh, and that enabled them to give him the shape they wanted. Because uh, so it's a slightly fatter engine, I think, than a Merlin, isn't it? Only just, but just slightly different. And then you've got, you bring all this together, and so you've got your uh, cowling open, or, uh, or closed, obviously. Uh, you, bring, you bring in this top uh, piece with the Beulah, uh, the cannon, Beulah cannon, uh, Beulers for the ammunition that slides in on top and locks everything in place and then you have your little supports and you put in your underside cowling as well but look at the detail they've gone into this is a 48 scale kit and we're on you know section 34 uh, with all this multifunctional multimedia parts going in and here you've got the option of having the closed version uh, of the, uh, the top of the engine cowling and again, the closed version, which is the one that we just showed you here. That's the closed version of the underside cowling, as in section 36. And then finally, you just pop all these together, of course, using these magnets, the magnet system, and they pop in, and if you want to change them, you just pop them out and swap them around. Uh, the, the critical part is this part, the, uh, the Bueller and front canopy uh, windscreen. That locks everything in place. You take that off first, and then everything just comes off and then you, you put that in back in place last to lock it back into place. And there we go, so you end up with a uh, stencil call out at the end. Let's be a bit wary though, because uh, sometimes they don't put all the stencils on the sheet and they appear on the colour call out instead. And there we have it. <clears throat> so that's the instructions. I remember reading this and thinking, Ooh, that's a lot of stuff to try and get my head around, but they have so uh, beautifully conceptualised it and made it so simple to understand. It's not a problem. Uh, and the, the functionality, the way it actually works in practice is absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. So we're going to very quickly whip through the plastic. There's not a lot to look at. Obviously it's not a huge kit, but let's have a look at these items here. You've got a couple of options in terms of um, the front screen here. If you can make this out well. So you've got your armour plate to the back of the seat here, you've got your main canopy that swings open to the side there. Here you've got your rear of the canopy with a little hole for the aerial antenna through it. And then you've got these two options here and here for the front windscreen, depending on which version you're using. And the glass is absolutely gorgeous, it really is nice. And it, it masked well, you know. Uh, and as I say, just a flashback, you can see in the background there what it looks like when it's finished. It looks great, you know, really good. Then we've got a little packet of uh, poly caps, and this is to do with the uh, the engine mounting and the prop. And the you've also got in here your little, I was going to say magnets, but it's actually the yeah, it is magnets. Then the, I can never pronounce this new. Nudium, nudium magnums, pneumodium magnums, pneumodium. That sounds like a cold and flu relief, doesn't it? I'm sure I've got that wrong. But anyway, you know what I mean. It's these very powerful magnets, what you mustn't do is drop them. You don't want your cat, dog or any other animal or children or adults eating this or getting it ingested because they are very powerful and can do damage in your, in your body. So be very careful with those. So... That then leaves us with the sprues. Now let's have a look in. You will not probably find a nicer Warbird type 48 scale kit than this. I rate, I rate it as one of the best. Um, 
I really used to, I enjoyed the old Tamiya Thunderbolt Razorback, but this was better because it's got so much extra features, you know, and functionality. The other thing it doesn't have is weight on wheels, but you often see that in 109 kits because the 109 had this very strange splayed undercarriage, uh, and it often sort of um, it didn't put its weight uh, directly on the centre of the tyre, so it didn't squash out quite like they do on other aircraft, like a Spitfire or whatever. Um, it's kind of on the shoulder of the uh, of the tyre rather than the centre of the actual uh, tread. So consequently, you very seldom see them very squished. So if you do see them squished out, they're probably not accurate in truth. You've got different tailwheel options here. I'll bring you a bit more of this. A couple of tailwheel options. Beautiful little wheels. Uh, and again, everything's so finely moulded. Some lovely detail. It takes a wash really well. Lovely uh, panel line detail on the wings. I realise it's in the bag, so it's a little bit tricky to get it to to show it. Don't know if you can see that. I'm not getting that too well in fairness. And then you've got this um, the open cowling and the closed version here, which has like a centre section. Um, and on the open one, you for, for whatever reason they decided to actually mould it as a separate piece where the cannons come out. And it looks a bit problematic. Actually, it wasn't. It was so finely moulded, it just sort of slotted into place. I didn't have any trouble with that at all. Then we have the engine. I like the way that Tammy put these things together on one sprue. So we've got the engine sprue here, and you've got some brilliant detail and you know, fantastic. The engine bearer supports here that look really, really nice. Then you've got your exhausts here. That's very, very nice. The uh, underside cowling. And then you've got the plenum chamber we talked about in the instructions here. Which ends up on the bottom, of course. Uh, and then you've got your main sort of block here. And supercharger here. And the various parts, including your twin cannons, right there. Um, now, Tammy did a great job with this. I've got to say, this, it's beautiful. Uh, people say they're a little bit softly moulded, maybe, but they're not. It's not suffering from the ejector pin marks everywhere that we seem to get normally. <coughs> Excuse me, that was just not a problem with this kit at all. Then we have this big, big sprue. I'll have to zoom you out for. Big sprue here with the bottom wing on it, with some very fine detail in there. Very, very nice. <coughs> Excuse me. There we are. See the um, some very nice. <coughs> Excuse me. Panel lines. Little ha little hatches. But be wary of some of those you need to sand off or, or putty them to smooth them off because some of them are not applicable on certain variants. You've got your slats here for extending the slats. Here's these rather clever pin and plug type gondola for the cannon, which is here. And this system enables you to plug it in and have it in perfect alignment every time. It will be exactly true. Very clever concept, um, something we haven't seen before. Here's the undercarriage we talked about, same, same idea here. So it's going to give you the true rake and angle and pitch of the wheels. And over here we've got uh, the two sides of the, here, two sides of the gondolas, which go around that plug and, <coughs> plug and cannon system, plug in cannon system. And then we've got the flaps, uh, and the several flaps, the split flaps. Lovely sprue, lovely sprue. It's a lovely, lovely kit. This I can, I can strongly recommend it to you. This kit, uh, I can tell you, it's going to get a very good rating at the end. <laughs> Here's the last sprue, and we've got strange for Tammy. I've gone and put this one bit of the sprue sticking out on its own, and I know in my own kit it was actually broken off. Um, I'm, I'm told that's quite common. 
this one isn't there, this one's all intact, so it must have been looked after better. And that of course is the front just behind the, uh, well, you can see the cooling jacket there for the engine, and it's just behind where the prop spinner sits. Speaking of the prop and spinner, here they are. Very, very nicely rendered indeed. Really good looking prop. Dead accurate, you know. You've got all sorts of interior detail here. Your trim wheels for the cockpit. Uh, you've got your uh, intake cowling underneath. Quite a nice pilot, it has to be said. It's uh, quite well rendered, the pilot is. And you've got various parts of the engine. You've got the uh, oxygen system here. It's inside the cockpit. You've got your tailplanes with this rather foolproof system again with these lugs so you cannot misalign it, it'll go in perfectly every time. And same with the rudder. And then you have this mounting system on which the engine actually builds it up on top of. And you've got your 109 fuse launch. Don't forget on the 109 it has this like a seam that runs down the spine. Uh, it's not, when you glue it together, you mustn't sand it out or fill it. It's supposed to be there on the real aeroplane. has one, one above and one below. So that is actually the way it is meant to look. Uh, on mine, I'm not sure, is it that evident? Maybe I filled it in with paint without realising it. But uh, you, you should try and leave it if you can. Um, and then you've got little details like you've got the uh, pilot's pedals there. And I mentioned, you know, photo etch, don't really need it on this kit, I don't think. It's not strictly necessary. Uh, there's just various little parts here where we've got the, um, the filters, engine intake filters and things like that. Uh, and we've got the parts of the, uh, the cockpit, uh, rear of the cockpit there. And the internal of the cockpit tub, the pilot's sitting. That's kind of it, really. Um, <coughs> I think with this, it's. Um, I never did a. Re I never did do a review of this kit when it came out. Um, I just got cracked on into to building it. Um, I didn't truly realise that it's. It's a classic example. I think this particular one. It is. Uh, it looks very nice on the sprue. You know, it looks. It looks great. Uh, if you're used to Edward, it kind of looks a bit like an Edward actually. But there is so much more to it, and it's more than the sum of its parts. When you start building this, you just, you're going to enjoy it. You're going to enjoy it because it's just, it goes together so beautifully. But because it has these additional things, it's not a boring build. It doesn't just, mm -mm -mm. you get into it and you start to understand the way the real aircraft works and how the, the cowlings open and all this sort of detail, which you don't get from a standard kit. And, you know, as we say, when you look at the finished product over here, I mean, um, I, I think you can probably see sometimes when you look at a model, you can tell when the builder enjoyed the build. And I think that comes through with this one of mine. But I certainly did enjoy it. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed building this kit. Absolute peach it was. Um, I didn't even bother to do things that I don't normally do, like the nice, uh, the nice aerials for the, uh, for the antenna sometimes I, I don't always bother with. I get a bit lazy sometimes, you know. And it, it's all there. It, it's an absolute cracker. It, it's a model that had a backstory that I quite liked. So, uh, you know, I did a version that uh, gave a little bit of a, a tale with it, which I thought was quite uh, worthy of telling. Uh, and is worthy of... Uh, uh, I'm looking into if you ever have a look at the book, A Higher Call. Uh, or you can see videos about it on YouTube, A Higher Call. Uh, and I'll look up Charlie Brown, not the cartoon character, had the bomber pilot, or Franz Stiegler, and you'll see their story. But I think that <clears throat> having now shown you this model, explained all the functions and the additional features that it has, which not I can't think of any other 48 scale kit that goes into this. They basically scale this down from the concept of the 30 second scale kit and it feels like it when you're building it. And it's great fun, real enjoyment, you, you really get into it and I was kind of sad when it came to an end really. Uh, I thought it was a cracking model, uh, one of my favourite builds ever. 
That is why I made the comments about the Spitfire. The Spitfire is not a bad kit at all. Uh, it's just a shame that they didn't do the same. If they'd have done that and you could have owned the cows come off with magnets and had your little Merlin in there, you know, I mean, this costs 30, 30, 30 pounds versus 34 pounds thereabouts. Slightly more now, perhaps 32, 36. For three, four pounds though, it feels like it's about 20 pounds worth more because they've just invested much more thought and techniques and uh, clever uh, innovation into the kit, which the Spitfire doesn't have. Spitfire is just a really good fitting Spitfire. Now that's why I made these comments. I wasn't trying to knock the Spitfire, I still I love that too, but it doesn't have the things in here that this has got. This is an absolute peach and I'm going to surprise the viewers now and say I give this model 10 out of 10. I can't really think of anything. If you wanted to be super picky, it's the decals, isn't it? But all Tamiya decals are like that. So in the context of a Tamiya kit, it's 10 out of 10. It's 10 out of 10. I haven't yet built the um, the Tomcat, 48 scale Tomcat, um, A or D, I've got the A. And I haven't built the Lightning yet. I've got two versions of that. I've got the white box and the ordinary one. And I will build probably the ordinary one. <coughs> So I've not actually built those kits yet, but I am led to believe that they are kind of similar, but they still don't have that extra functionality of, you know, engine cowlings that can be opened or closed and, and be inter interchanged. <clears throat> Some people say, oh, it's a bit toy-like. I don't think so. I don't think it's toy-like at all. It doesn't look like a toy. It's very, very clever. And you can see when you get your little ICM figures, like I did, you know, your mechanics working on the model, it really gives it that extra dimension, three-dimensional realism which you don't, you don't really get from other kits. Um, and I just think it lends itself to dioramas beautifully. So I'm, I'm not going to hold back on this. I'm just going to say it like I think. I say the only reservation is the decals, but I'm going to give it 10 out of 10. I think it's probably only the second kit where I've gone to 10. So for £36, you can't go wrong with this kit. You don't need any other BF109, you don't. <laughs> There's probably too many of them out there, I know. Anyway, that's that's my view. I'm going to now put my Mr Hobby there to make sure it doesn't fall out, because he seems to want to do that. That is my verdict. I am not going to change my mind. I think it's an absolute stunner. One of the best kits of all time. Certainly probably the best in 48th. You won't regret it if you buy this one. So, 10 out of 10. Thumbs up from me. One of my best ever rated. So it's been a pleasure to do this review because I've been able to revisit, thanks to my relative, I've been able to revisit it again and just remind myself how good it was. Um, so there you go. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, please give us a thumbs up if you did so. Any comments, I always welcome all comments as long as they're not rude or, or insulting. Uh, but even comments, you know, I sometimes make mistakes. Some people have pointed out a couple of mistakes. I mean, I won't bore you with all the details now. But, uh, and I've re I realised, oh no, I've, he's right, I've got that wrong. You know. And I'll always say thanks, you know, because I, I can't remember everything on the spur of the moment. And I don't, I only do my videos uh, unedited. So I don't do any cuts. Everything you hear me talk about, it's all from memory. I haven't got notes or, or other bits of, you know, cue cards or anything around here. I just do it from memory. So we all make a mistake now and again when you do that. So thanks for joining me. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so because I think you'll find there's more interesting stuff like this coming along. And uh, if you are a subscriber, please don't forget to ding the notification bell to make sure you get informed of any new ones that come up. And it just remains for me to say thank you for joining me. I hope you all stay safe and uh, have good health. And until next time, thanks a lot and bye for now.